hear this breaking limiting belief, what comes to you? Limitation. Okay. Anybody else? What is limiting belief? Okay. Anybody else? Uh huh. Okay. It's a belief in ourselves which stops us from doing what we actually can do. And that's there in each one of us. So the limiting belief basically is, is something which does operate at the subconscious level, which happens at the back end of us when we're waking up or sleeping. It, it begins to hold us just like the baby elephant, which has been conditioned over the years to believe that it can never break free. So when I come to limiting belief, I can quickly show you also a small example in terms of how each one of you can actually break your limiting belief. He did first time, he actually believed he can go only to that limit. But when he actually played in his own mind, he made himself go beyond the limit he set in his mind. And that's usually most of the people go about 20, 30 percent more than what they can actually do in reality. So suppose you can relate that to your business. You can relate that if you're a student or if you have kids. You can imagine how much of more they can perform if they just work on breaking the limiting belief. Now, coming back here, I'll give an example of a person. He grew up in a family of educationists, bankers, academics. So what happened is, there were nobody in his family who are entrepreneurs. Every day for the next 20 years, he began to hear that if you have to be successful, you have to be a banker, or you have to be an academic, or you have to be in a government job. So what do you think this child or the person would have picked on as a growing up years? See, there's a lot of research on this, why people develop limiting belief, why people begin to not perform to the level they would like to perform. And the most recent, uh, recent research which has come out is one of the main factors, in fact there are two factors, one of the main factors is our upbringing. Basically how each one of us are brought up in our own family. Our parents and our siblings is what basically influences the most to us. We either tend to begin to believe that we can perform at a better level, or we tend to believe that we cannot. We can only do only so much and more than that. Because we are always exposed to most of the time to our own family. And this influences our operating system, which is nothing but the subconscious mind, in terms of to believe whether we can reach our potential or not. And of course, the second is our immediate environment. You must have all heard the wordings. We are what the five people we spend the time most with. You know why that's true? Visualization is used by some of the most top performing sports athletes. You name the piece, persons. You name um, probably any of these tennis players or cricket players. One of the most used ex exercises the power of visualization. So if, if you could all permit me, I could probably show you in about a minute or two how to exactly visualize. Uh, do I have your permission? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Actually being visualized. The most effective way to visualize is by ensuring that all the five senses are activated. Most of the times you'll not be able to activate all the five sense organs, but at least if each one of you can manage three or four of the sense organs, the mind will start produce, reproducing the data. When are the two best time to visualize? The two best time to visualize is, first is when you get up in the morning. That's the reason is because each one of us shift from the subconscious mode into the conscious mode. When you wake up in the morning, you visualize very powerfully how you want your day to be or how you want your week to be or how you want your goals to be set. And the second best time is when you just go down, go to sleep. 
Now, why, why do you think when you go to sleep, you need to visualize? Just like all of us, how we pray, we also need to visualize about our goals. The reason is because we are shifting from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind when we go to sleep. And you can ask. Uh, found out with visualization technique is that it is not always 100% right. Mm -hmm. Usually, like let's say two wrestlers are playing together, Correct. both visualize this, but at the end only one win. And what happens is, many times people have visualized it. Mm -hmm. Let's say India wanted independence, so the visualization was there for many times. Mm -hmm. But it took uh, another century for us to get it. Correct. So I am sure that visualization helps us, but that's not the final answer to it because uh, you can have an idea towards it, mm -hmm. but it cannot be as realistic as you giving the date. It happens, I'm sure that it happens many times, but not all the time. I agree with you. See, basically, if you look at a global subject like global warming, if you realize it will become fine. It can never happen. But if you look at, say, if I, I, if I want to lose 10 kg, say by December 31st, now that's a very specific goal. You're giving a time, say, by December 31st, I want to lose 10 kg, and you'll see yourself losing 10 kg, how healthy you'll be, how happy you'll be, how energetic you'll be. That'll happen. I'll guarantee you if you actually visualize it. And what will happen is, most of us, right, we say, I cannot avoid this pastry. When I see it, I just eat. But when you actually visualize, your, your mind will tell not to eat. The self-control will kick in. Right? It overrides your mechanism, where you otherwise you'll be tempted to do something. It brings in a sense of discipline. It's as simple as that. But again, nothing is 100%, right? So we need to make trial and error. But most of the times, because in, in yes, so it, it begins to kind of this. So I think I'm done. Um, thank you very much. I hope any most of you did pick up some learnings from this. All the very best.